Hello Haskellings, day 8's challenge is to decode a badly wired 7 segment display. We can know that when only two segments are on, they should be wired to segments C and F, and represent the number 1. When three segments are on, that can only be segments A, C and F, and number 7. Four segments must similarly be a number 4, however when five or six segments are shown, they could represent one of the following possible combinations. I'll put the letters they have in common in parentheses here. When all segments are on, it must be an 8, but we get no information from this case. Our first task is to count the total number of 1s, 4s, 7s and 8s on the output side, that is, the strings of lengths 2, 3, 4 and 7. Let's start by splitting each line up into words, and dropping the 10 input words plus the pipe separator. We can then filter for those with one of the required lengths. Then when we put all of them together and get the total length, we get back the answer we need. Part 2 is once again significantly more involved. Let's start again completely, and we can start with a function to process each row and return a result for that row which will end up being the summation of all of the decoded output values. For each row, we'll need to separate each row into words, and let's sort each word for good measure before passing them on to F. For each line, let's make separate lists for the input and output, using take and drop. Actually, let's make X's prime be a list of all the values for that line. Let's start trying to deduce some of the segments by working out what we know and going from there. When we filter all of the values that have length 2, we should know that they map to the C and F segments. All of these should be identical, so we can just take the head of this list. I'm hoping that we don't have any lines that don't have such a value, because I think it would make this problem impossible. Similarly. When we filter for values of length 3, we know these map to A, C and F. To avoid code duplication, we can make this into a separate function, parameterized by the length. Now, to deduce which segment maps to A, we can just filter out the values in ACF that are in CF, and again take the head of that, as there should be only one. We could also use the list difference function there. We can show our progress by making a string for each line's mapping, like this. We can now continue with our deductions. BDCF is then the values with four segments. Next, we'll try to determine which characters are in common between all of the five segment values. After filtering by length, we can get each unique value by sorting them, then getting the head of each group. We could also use nub here for this. And the error here is because these should be dollars. Let's then find which letters are in common between these strings by recursively removing any characters not in common. We could also do a fold on the intersect function for this. We'll be making use of this pattern again, so let's make this into a separate helper function too and use it to get ABFG from the six segment values. Now we just need to determine each letter step by step. We can get G by getting the common letters between ABFG and ADG and filtering out A. Then we can determine B by finding the common letter between ABFG and BD, where BD is BDCF with CF filtered out. F itself can be determined by removing from ABFG the letters for A, B and G, which we have already determined, leaving C as the other letter in CF. Similarly, D is then the other letter in BD, leaving E 
which maps to the only letter left unallocated. But we're still not done yet. We have yet to make a function to get a value for a given string. We can do that by sorting the mapped letters for each seven segment pattern and comparing that with the given input string, which is already sorted. If we have a match, we have found the value. So we just have to do this for all of the numbers using guards. After doing that, we'll need to map the value function over each of the output strings, and we can then do the lazy thing and just use show on each of those numbers, then read in the whole number. We're getting an error there, but that's probably because we haven't specified a type for read. We can just use sum on the results to give it a hint. But it looks like we've also forgotten to concatenate the digits together. And with that, we're done for another day. So until next time, happy Haskelling!